Hey guys, in this video we will be picking up where we left off last time about inner joins and we'll be looking at other types of joins that we can do between tables, namely left joins and right joins. Now before I proceed, I just want us to review some of the design decisions that we made on our enrollments table and those would be surrounding the necessity of values for the foreign key values. Do recall that we allowed nulls on each of our foreign keys and of course those design decisions could be changed uh, because an enrollment really shouldn't occur if a student and a course don't go together. However, in practical terms, there can be an enrollment of a student in a course but no teacher being assigned to that enrollment just yet. And so in keeping with that design decision, I actually added a few more rows, a few more rows of data to our courses table, teacher table, and enrollments table. So here you see that I selected all from enrollments and I have a few columns down to the end where the teacher ID is actually null, uh, but we have students being assigned to course with ID seven, just no lecturer being assigned to that course just yet. I have included scripts that will insert additional courses and additional teachers into the database so you can go ahead i also made a design change i changed teacher to teachers that's the name of the table teacher to teachers as i left off the s so i made that correction so you can feel free to change that design or just modify the script according to what you have now let's take a look at the concept of left and right joins now, once again, let's take a look at our select statement on our enrollment table, which is bringing back every single enrollment that is currently in the system. Well, at least the top 1,000. Since we have fewer than 1,000, then we're getting back all of them. And we see here that the between IDs 17 through 21, there would be no lecturer or teacher assigned to those enrollments. Now, here I've written an inner join statement which is going to bring back all the columns between the two tables, enrollments and teachers. That's what the star means, if you remember. And the expectation is that the inner join is actually just going to bring back on either side where the condition is met, meaning the teacher ID in the enrollments table, and I'm using my aliases, E and T, E for enrollments, T for teachers. So E dot teacher ID must exactly match the ID in the teacher table. And if that condition is not met, then that row will not be returned. And so the expectation is that when we execute this query, the rows 17 through 21 or IDs 17 through 21 in enrollments will not be returned because there is no teacher in the teacher's table with an ID of null. So null will not match to any of those values. So I press the five and here we see that both query results are here stacked. And in the top result, we see that we're bringing back 17, a total of 17 rows for the enrollments. However, in the lower stack, we're seeing that we're only bringing back 12, which clearly means that there were omissions as we went along. So columns 17 through 21 or enrollments 17 through 21 were not returned because they did not meet the minimum condition. Now, in a scenario where you wanted to bring back every single enrollment, regardless of the presence of the data to match this exact condition, that's where your left join comes in. So the left join is really easy. It's just a modification of a typical inner join where instead of saying inner, you literally just say left. And what happens here is that it will bring back every single thing on the left side of the query. And I'm saying left side of the query because if you read from left to right, and I'll just put this all in one line, then you see that the enrollments table is to the left of the join and the teacher's table is to the right of the join. So a left join is saying, bring back every single row, every single row of data from the table that's on the left. And if there's a match, then you can bring back any matching data on the table and condition on the right. But even if there is no matching data still bring back that column on the left. So when I execute this query, the expectation is that this will bring back every single enrollment, just that there should be a few more nulls in our results set. 
So let's execute and see what happens. All right, so I wrote an entirely different statement for our left join. So now we have three queries being run in this script alone, each one being displayed here in its own stack. So up top, we have select star from enrollment. So we know that enrollments would have about five null rows. And below we have the inner join data set, which should only have about 12. So this one is only bringing back the exact matches, but then the last one, which would be the result set, uh, from our left join would actually have every single enrollment. All right, so we do have enrollments and see we're bringing back IDs 17 through 21 with the enrollment details, but because there is a null value in the teacher ID, there's a null match because, well, it didn't bring back the corresponding data from our teacher table. So that is the power of a left join. You may be faced with a situation where you know you need back everything from one side, but then you need additional data if it's available. But the table, the main table is absolutely important. And that would be this situation. The enrollments are absolutely important. Maybe the administration wants to see how many students have enrolled in a class regardless of if they have a lecturer or not. So this query would actually bring back every single enrollment that exists regardless of the presence of a teacher. The reverse may also be true. So we're right now we're catering to the table on the left and we could always swap this out. We could put teachers on the left side and the words and, and, and the enrollments on the right side. And that would actually bring back every single teacher regardless of if they are currently assigned to an enrollment or to a class. But instead of doing all of that and that switching, we could actually just use a right join, which would basically do the reverse of the left join, where it would bring back everything in the table to the right of the join, and regardless of if it has matching data in the table to the left. So here I've written, uh, select statement with a right join instead. So this time the bias is on the teacher's table where you want to see every single teacher. Now I, I included some teachers, I inserted some more teachers, not all of them have been assigned to an enrollment. So the expectation is that we're going to see every single teacher and an enrollment if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, then the enrollments would be blank. So once again, I have all of my queries here stacked. I have my select star from enrollments up top. I have my inner join here. I have my left join here. And then when I go down, I'll see that I have my right join here. And if I scroll through, we'll see that the lecturer details do repeat for each enrollment for which they are associated, right? So everywhere there's ID two in an enrollment, that's where John McDonald is. However, we can see here that these three lecturers that were just added were not assigned to any class. So we bring back all of the lecturers on the right, all right? So remember we're using right join. So the teacher's table is to the right. So we're bringing back every single lecturer. And if there's an enrollment, then we see the details. If not, then everything is null. And you may note also that the that the enrollments that were not given a teacher ID, and I'll just go back quickly, these enrollments with IDs 17 through 21, they're not be being returned here because once again, the right join is giving the bias to the teacher, to the teacher's table, which is on the right. So the left join gives bias to whichever table is on the left, bringing back every single record, regardless of if there's a match or not. And the right join basically does the opposite. So it brings back everything to the right, regardless of if there's a match for the data that's on the left. The final statement I'll show you is the full join, which basically says, I want everything on either side. If there's a match, then bring me back one row with all the details. If there's no match, then bring me back from either side regardless. And that is what the full join does. So we have the left, we have the right and we have the full and let's not forget our inner. So inner sifts through and make sure that there's an exact match. Left says, if there's an exact match, then that's fine. But bring me everything to the left side of my query. Uh, right join does the opposite of left join. 
what was right is not what was left is not right and the full join says i don't care which direction you are just bring me back and if there's a match then fine and so the last result set that we're looking at below actually depicts what happens during the full join so we see here that all of the rows that would have been missing in the inner join or left join or the right join they're all being brought back right here so our lecturers without an abiding city and our enrollments without a lecturer and all enrollments that have lecturers assigned or teachers assigned, everything is coming back and that's the power of the full join. So you can go ahead and play around with this. The three script files have been included in the resources for this video. Have fun.